Hello everybody and welcome back to this short course of bio inorganic chemistry. Most organisms require molecular oxygen in order to survive. We have been discussing various dioxin carrying proteins in our life. In my last lecture, I was talking about hemoglobin and myoglobin in our body. As I have discussed that hemoglobin is tetramer, as you can see that this is one heme, two heme, third, fourth. There are four heme centers in hemoglobin, which is wrapped by huge protein chains around it, while in myoglobin, this is the monoheme centers. And here also, huge protein chains are surrounding these heme centers. I have discussed that how the heme centers binds dioxygen in case of hemoglobin and myoglobin. As one can see this while iron to heme center converts to iron 3 in oxyhemoglobin or myoglobin, then dioxygen actually converts to O2 minus which is superoxides. During this process, there is a color change happening in deoxy form, it was a dull red while it becomes bright red after dioxin binding. The excess structure of monomeric unit is shown here. You can see that dioxin binds to iron center in an angular fashion. So, deoxy myoglobin is shown over here. And as one can see that the heme center which is sitting inside the huge protein chains which can easily be visualized just by removing proteins. And as one can see this, this is the iron center which indeed binds dioxygen. The oxymyoglobin structure is also shown, I have discussed in my previous lecture in details. You see that the dioxin binds to the iron center in an angular fashion and distal histidine actually plays a role of stabilizing this dioxin binding on iron. And oxyhemoglobin as also you can see that there are four heme centers and huge protein chains which are actually covering and which are also separating these two iron centers. And once you remove these protein chains, you see that these are four unit, four heme centers and all these four coordinated uh, dioxygen and dioxygen is in angular fashion. I also have discussed how the distal histidine acts as a gate and discriminates oxygen from carbon monoxides. However, we also have seen that once dioxin binds to the iron center, there is a huge structural changes happening around this iron. So, what is exactly happening? This iron 2 which is in high spin state and which is also displaced towards this proximal histidine upon oxygenation, this deoxy converts to oxy form and iron center comes at the plane of this porphyrin ring, whereas dioxygen becomes superoxides O2 minus. And due to such displacement, there is a huge change around the periphery of this heme center. Here I have shown how dioxin binding leading to huge structural change. In deoxy form, which is 5 coordinated iron center 
and iron is in high spin state and when dioxygen comes and binds to the iron center. So, iron 2 converts to iron 3 while dioxygen converts to superoxides O2 minus. Also iron 2 which was displaced towards this proximal histidine site and sitting above the mean porphyrin plane now coming back to the porphyrin plane and thereby there is a huge structural and conformational change on at the heme center and around the uh, protein chains. As one can see this movement of iron upon dioxin binding that in deoxy to oxy in the distal histidine forcing uh, dioxin to bind in angular fashion. And also another thing is happening as I have already discussed that iron center in deoxy which was is a 5 coordinated species which was above then the mean porphyrin plane now comes inside the porphyrin plane. So, it fits perfectly on the porphyrin plane. So, there is a movement of iron from deoxy to oxy is happening. This is a huge consequence and in next slides we will be talking mostly on that. So, there is a huge structural change upon dioxin binding. Here you can see that the proximal histidine which is ligated at the fifth position and it moves a lot before and after dioxin binding which is clearly reflected in this diagram. Heme center also which were highly doomed shaped now becomes planar after dioxin binding. So, there is a, a change in the heme porphyrin ring there is a huge change on iron displacement, there is a huge change on proximal histidine and as proximal histidine is also linked with this protein chains. So, it makes a huge change in the entire protein around this molecule and which indeed generates cooperativity uh, uh, particularly in case of hemoglobin because all this is a hemoglobin is a tetrameric unit and they are all linked the protein chains are wrapping all these four unit in such a way that there is an effect between all these heme centers upon subsequent dioxin binding which we will be discussing uh, in next few slides. So, this is the origin of cooperativity that we often see in case of hemoglobin. As I have said that this is the deoxy and oxy, there is a huge structural change and this protein chains they also are linked with an hydrogen bonding salt bridge interaction. And as you can see that there are two heme centers over here, one heme over here, one heme over here. Now, once a dioxin binds, you see that what would happen that there is a huge structural change and some of this hydrogen bonding actually breaks and there is a huge conformational change in the protein also. We have seen the structural change around iron centers. So, there is a huge conformational change within the protein after dioxin binding which indeed generates the cooperativity. Now, let us look at the statistical probability of oxygen binding in hemoglobin. As I have said that hemoglobin is a tetrameric unit. There are four heme centers which is wrapping uh, a huge protein chains is wrapping and uh, there is a if one center there is a change a small conformational change it affects all four. Okay. What would happen if dioxin comes and bind step wise? So, step wise binding constant like if 
Hb plus O2 HbO2. Another HbO2 as Hb is a tetramer as I said that there are four him unit. Uh, first one unit binds one dioxygen, then another unit binds the second dioxygen giving rise to HbO2, two, then the three dioxygen, then the four dioxygen because four him unit can binds four dioxygen. Okay? Now, if you consider a simple system where this two heme center are not interacting or not linked, not uh, influencing each other, what you can see? You can see that statistical probability of binding dioxin will decreases in this fashion. Like what? That K 1, this is K 1, this is K 2, 2, two dioxin, this is third one is K 3 and the fourth one is K 4. So, K 1 is greater than K 2 is greater than K 3 and then K 4. So, the binding constants decreases in this fashion. So, that is one could expect statistically. So, this is just like musical chair. Many of you have seen or performed in the musical chair and as you remove one after another chairs, the probability of getting or uh, that chairs is reduced. Okay? So, just I have shown you the statistical expectation is K 1 is more than K 2, more than K 3 and then K 4 and that you can see in the musical chair performance as well. When one chair is removed, your probability get reduced, second chair removed, your probability gain further reduced and when you have only one chair left, so probability of getting that chair is reduced. Okay. Now, what is happening in reality in case of hemoglobin? In hemoglobin, the binding affinity increases as subsequent oxygen molecule bounds. It is just an opposite. That means, K 4 is greater than K 3, K 3 is greater than K 2, K 2 is greater than K 1. This is a remarkable uh, sequence because the statistical probability which we expected out of four heme center is completely inverted in reality. This is what is happening uh, in hemoglobin. Now, this is because of cooperative binding of dioxin with hemoglobin. Please note that no such cooperativity however observed in case of myoglobin because of its monomeric nature. So, let us look at little bit more on cooperative binding of dioxin in hemoglobin. So, oxygen binds to each of the four iron atoms in hemoglobin. This occurs sequentially with the affinity of H 4 sites changing as the sites becomes occupied with oxygen. Let us think that L as a ligand of molecular oxygen. So, this is the tetrameric unit you know deoxy hemoglobin. Now, one oxygen comes and occupy one heme centers and binding constant is K 1. The next dioxygen comes and binds the second position, second heme center. Third oxygen comes and binds the third heme center and the fourth oxygen comes and binds the fourth center. So, all these four unit is now saturated with dioxygen. So, the hemoglobin molecule exhibits lower affinity at the first molecule of oxygen to bind because of all this salt bridge interaction which indeed are actually blocking the sixth position. It was difficult for dioxin to goes and bind on that iron center. Now, more and more dioxin binds on the iron, it becoming easier 
to binds dioxin to the subsequent heme centers and that is what is happening. So, this binding affinity rather increases as subsequent oxygen molecule binds and that is the reason why we see a completely reversal of what is being expected from the statistical point of view. So, K 4 is more than the K 3, K 3 is greater than the K 2 and which is greater than the K 1, whereas statistical order is K 1 is greater than K 2, greater than K 3 and greater than K 4, thinking that if there is no interactions through protein chains between two iron centers or to him center if they are isolated. So, this says that hemo in hemoglobin the heme centers are not isolated, they are actually linked through the protein chains and protein chains which actually controlling this reactivity. So, this is actually percent of oxygen saturation. So, the dioxin binding and cooperativity can be clearly visualized if one see this curve. What is this plot? Here this percent of oxygen saturation is being plotted with partial pressure of dioxygen. And one can see that the venous partial pressure of oxygen is very low there in case of tissue. In tissue the partial pressure of oxygen is low, whereas in lungs partial pressure of oxygen is very high, okay, which is clearly reflected here. Now, both hemoglobin and myoglobin behavior is plotted here. As you can see that this is what is the behavior of myoglobin, which is basically an hyperbolic saturation curve. And as you can see that myoglobin Mb is saturated at very low oxygen pressure, which is present in the tissue. In the tissue, the whatever low oxygen pressure good enough for myoglobin to get fully saturated out of that. In contrast, hemoglobin, the saturation is much less. Hemoglobin requires large oxygen concentration to get fully saturated, which is present in lungs. So, this curve is sigmoidal for hemoglobin and which is a clear reflection of cooperative binding of dioxygen. Otherwise, if there is no cooperativity, you could expect the hyperbolic saturation curve as one can see in case of myoglobin. This is very important. Hemoglobin is more oxygenated at higher oxygen pressure, which is present in the lungs, whereas myoglobin is more oxygenated at lower oxygen pressure, such as in tissues. This makes possible the transfer of dioxygen from oxyhemoglobin to myoglobin in the tissue. So, this is a clear reflection of cooperative binding of dioxin in case of hemoglobin. However, this cooperativity is completely absent in case of myoglobin as we have discussed in previous slides. Question is that what is the origin of the cooperativity in dioxin binding to hemoglobin? Now, dioxin binding to one iron sites causes first is that a spin state change converting high spin to low spin. The iron move into the porphyrin cavity in oxyhemoglobin. The proximal base moves along with the iron. The proximal base drags the F helix along with it and this induces a large protein conformational change which is reflected in the cooperativity and that is the reason why nature design two proteins, one is hemoglobin, one is myoglobin, one is having cooperativity 
in myoglobin there is no cooperativity and we have seen that how this cooperativity helps to transfer dioxin from hemoglobin to myoglobin. Now there is another interesting effects happening once dioxin binds. This is actually first observed by Christian Bohr which is the father of Niels Bohr. All of you know about him actually first seen this effect. An increased concentration of protons and or carbon dioxide will reduce the oxygen affinity of hemoglobin. The chemical basis for the Bohr effect is due to the formation of the bridge of quaternary structure. You see that this is the salt bridge interactions uh, between two amino acids, this amine group and acid group, they have this interactions in terms of hydrogen bonding. And Bohr effect is the dependence of the affinity of hemoglobin for oxygen on pH. Just by changing the pH, you can also break some of these salt bridge interactions and this Bohr effect is very important for transporting oxygen from hemoglobin to myoglobin, which we will see in the subsequent slides. This is a curve which shows the change of oxygen affinity with pH. So, percent of oxygen saturation versus partial pressure of oxygen is plotted over here. And as one can see that myoglobin, the carp is hyperbolic in nature and has greater affinity for oxygen at low partial pressure. In contrast, in hemoglobin, the sigmoidal curve indicate that the binding of oxygen is cooperative in nature. Also, the affinity towards dioxin decreases as pH decreases. As one can see that oxygenation is favored in basic condition in hemoglobin due to the elimination of hydrogen bonding whereas in deoxy hemoglobin is favored in acidic condition as shown in the curve. Due to the absence of cooperative interaction as there are only one subunit myoglobin oxygenation does not show any Bohr effect. Oxygenation is favored in basic condition in hemoglobin due to the elimination of hydrogen bonding, whereas deoxygenation is favored in acidic condition as shown in the curve. And what we observe? We observe is that oxygenation favored in basic condition while deoxygenation favor in acidic condition. You can see that the saturation curve, you know the dioxin which is required to saturate for hemoglobin is more if you increase the pH in the basic medium. But in acidic medium, the saturation that is required for hemoglobin is less. So, Bohr effect basically the oxygenation of hemoglobin becomes pH dependent. As one can see that oxygenation is favored in basic condition while deoxygenation favored in acidic condition. Now, this is what is being plotted. The partial pressure of dioxygen which is required for its saturation which is plotted in the y axis in the x axis it is the pH is being plotted. Now, what you see in case of hemoglobin the lowest affinity of dioxygen towards him center is at around 6.4 to 6.5 pH whereas, pH in basic medium the binding affinity is very large. So, Hb has lowest oxygen affinity at pH 6.4. In contrast, 
myoglobin the affinity towards oxygen does not change much by changing pH. So, under such weakly acidic condition, so 6.4 is basically in weak acidic condition, transfer of oxygen from oxyhemoglobin to myoglobin is indeed greatly favor. So, therefore, tissues which are consuming dioxygen produce lactic acid, carbon dioxide and carbonic acid which helps to release dioxin from oxyhemoglobin to myoglobin by lowering the pH of the medium. This is a cartoon diagram as you know that hemoglobin takes oxygen from the environment convert to oxyhemoglobin at the lungs. Then this passes through the arteries and then it comes to the tissue where it transforms dioxygen to myoglobin. And then this hemoglobin converted to deoxyhemoglobin whereas, myoglobin converts to oxymyoglobin which is stored in the tissue. Now, then this deoxyhemoglobin it takes carbon dioxide which is released in tissue out of this respiration and converts to carbamide some of this amino acid as you can see that this amine plus carbon dioxide this carbamide and releases a proton. So, this is what is the cycle happening all the time in our body. So, Hb hemoglobin binds oxygen to its heme iron at the lungs and delivers oxygen to myoglobin which stores oxygen until it is required for metabolic oxidation. And then again this deoxyhemoglobin is actually doing another job. It is bring back the carbon dioxide which is the byproduct of oxidation backs to the lungs to get rid of it. So, actually hemoglobin does the both things together. We now try to understand what protein chains are doing. If you take hemoglobin and myoglobin, what is exactly happening? This iron to him binds to dioxygen reversibly to form iron 3 O 2 minus and then once dioxin leaves iron 3 converted to iron 2 again. So, dioxin binding is indeed reversible in hemoglobin and myoglobin. In contrast, if you make such heme unit in the laboratory and without protein chains, what would happen? This iron 2 heme center bind dioxin irreversibly immediately form this mu oxo dimer which is a very stable unit. So, one can see that dioxygen binding cannot be reversible anymore because this iron 3 no longer can convert it to iron 2. So, this suggests that protein chain helps to bind dioxygen reversibly. What exactly is happening with synthetic hemes? Now, iron 2 heme binds dioxygen as observed in hemoglobin and myoglobin converts to iron 3 O 2 minus. So, metal is getting oxidized and dioxygen is getting reduced to superoxide first. Now, once it forms this iron 3 O 2 minus complex, then this react with another iron 2 heme and convert this mu peroxo species iron. As I have already informed you earlier that if you look at this bond energy of dioxygen, this is 117.2 kcal per mole. If it is superoxides, then this bond dissociation energy becomes 55.5 kcal per mole. However, if it is hydrogen peroxides, the bond dissociation energy is very low 34.3 indeed 
this is the state where that O bond get clipped very easily in biology. Now, this mu peroxo species undergo O O cleavage and converts to two feral heme centers iron 4 oxo and which is a highly reactive intermediate which immediately binds to another iron 2 heme center forms this iron 3 mu oxo dimer which is very stable. So, this is what is being proposed for synthetic hemes which converts to mu oxo dimer. Now, in order to understand that the mechanism properly. So, what is happening if we want to stop the formation of mu oxo dimer, we need to stop the formation of mu peroxo complex and actually protein chains help binding dioxin reversibly. Otherwise, without protein it converts to mu oxo dimer. Now, this is what is happening when dioxin binds to a heme center as you can see in case of myoglobin. So, this heme center is wrapped with a huge protein chains. So, another heme center cannot come close so that it can form mu peroxo complex. In contrast, if you have synthetic heme center or without protein chain, what would happen? Then this species iron 3 O 2 minus species convert to mu peroxo species because it immediately reacts with another heme center and form this mu peroxo species as shown over here which eventually leads to iron 4 oxo then mu oxo dimer which is very stable. Now, how we know that protein chain is actually responsible for binding dioxin reversibly. In order to prove that lot of synthetic chemists have made different molecules in the laboratory and one of this design I will be illustrating to you. Now, this is a heme centers having four long substituents at the porphyrin periphery which are directed towards the same side of the ring resembles the pickets of a fence. So, this if one can design such molecule then if it reacts with another heme center it is supposed to form mu peroxo species. However, as one can see because of the steric it will not form mu peroxo species because there is a steric interaction between these uh, substituents. So, we can stop the formation of mu peroxo and indeed this has happened say once we make this artificial heme center with substituents at the periphery and because of the steric it will not convert to mu peroxo rather it binds dioxin in a reversible fashion. This proves that dioxygen can binds with even artificial iron porphyrins reversibly without protein chain if one design appropriate molecules for that. Now, there have been several such model system available in the literature for dioxin binding and people have made protected pockets such as picket fence approach as shown over here all the substituents are directed towards the same side of the ring. There is a strapped model also as you can see that this one side is completely blocked so that another heme center cannot come close. And there is also Ruffet model where one side is completely blocked. It inhibits the formation of mu peroxo species. However, all this molecule binds dioxin reversibly. I will be showing one such 
synthetic molecule picket fence porphyrin which is synthesized by Coleman et al. long back and this molecule indeed able to bind dioxygen reversibly although affinity is low, but it is possible to bind dioxygen and this molecule is also structurally characterized as you can see dioxygen binds in an angular fashion over here all these substituents are towards the same site and provide a hydrophobic environment so that dioxygen can bind in a reversible fashion. So, there have been attempt to make artificial molecule which can carry dioxygen reversibly. If we can make this kind of artificial molecule which can indeed replace our blood, indeed one day we can make this artificial blood to fight against various blood related disease such as thalassemia, blood cancer, all this problem could be solved if we can make artificial blood which can replace the real blood of our body. In conclusion, I have discussed today how protein chains are actually responsible for reversible dioxygen binding in hemoglobin and myoglobin. I have also highlighted how the beautiful design principle makes smooth transfer of oxygen between hemoglobin and myoglobin and thereby responsible for our survival. In my next lecture, however, I will talk about heme oxygenase, which is indeed responsible for the decomposition of the red blood cells. Thank you.